What is going on? YouTube, Carter here, got another video for you. We're doing a double freaking unboxing today, but this one, this one's cool-ish, weird. I don't know, a little insight into the volatility of my psyche, so to speak. I've got two packages. Both of these arrived today. I did not plan this, but this is representative of me and my knife collecting. These two knives are arguably as polar opposite as you could possibly get. Like really, I didn't even realize it till today. I saw these two were coming today and I was like, do I want to do an unboxing video? I don't know. I don't, I don't love doing them. Not my favorite thing. Um, but when I saw which two knives were coming, uh, I kind of thought it was a cool opportunity to, uh, to showcase how ridiculous my knife collecting can be in terms of what I'm into. So we're going to start with this one. This one's probably, if you've been watching my channel recently, this, this one is probably going to be the one that's like, okay, that makes sense. The other one is going to be the one that's a little bit of an oddity, potentially. But they're completely, completely different. So, boom, we have a Strider here. Um, bought another Strider. I sold a bunch of Striders. Bought another Strider. And uh, uh, this one's cool. Um, let me get it in frame here. So, it's a Tonto. It's the new style Tonto. And it is G10. That's the only reason I got it. G10, new style Tonto. Um, I sold my, my Tonto that had the aluminum scales. I kind of regret it. I really liked it. I like the way that Strider does these. They're just wicked. Not, not the best for cutting, but just so cool. And uh, I've always got a soft spot in my heart for old school G10 Striders. So this kind of just brings me back to kind of pre-Strider split. This is the exact same type of G10 that they used. All one piece like they used to do. Only difference is these used to be the front of the screws. They would come through here and have a little knurled ring that it would screw into. Now they've got a female cap portion here that actually has a tube that runs through. And then the male screw comes in on this side. And then of course the, uh, the thumb studs this has the new style thumb studs and not the uh, big, big pins of the uh, old kind that they used to have. Um, so very cool. Glad to have this back in my collection. I don't think I'm going to be getting any more Striders for a while, but to me, this is like quintessential Striderdom here. What a beauty. The only thing that would make this better is if it had OD Green or Coyote Brown G10. That would just... Chef's Kiss. I have not seen any new production Striders that has anything other than Black G10. These are actually pretty rare, um, usually done as exclusives for shows. I've seen, I used to have one that was uh, stonewashed, drop point, three-quarter grind. I've also seen three-quarter grind, drop point in the Tiger Stripe, and then now the three-quarter grind Tonto Tiger Stripe. It would be cool if they brought back the flat grind Tonto. That would be sick. Um, absolutely love it. This is a quintessential, quintessential knife for my collection. Really, really like the Strider. So now let's get to the, let's get to the goo. I call this one the goofball, but that's not really a fair assessment because the point of this video is to show that my love of knives is all over the place. And I appreciate a lot of things. I do have a bad habit of, um, kind of hyper focusing on certain brands or certain types of knives for a period of time. Uh, so you'll see on my channel, it'll appear like it's a Strider only channel or an Emerson only channel. And then all of a sudden I'm doing like production knives and all kinds of other things. So, uh, it is kind of all over the place like that, but let's see if I can figure out how to, does it not look like this should, oh, wow. Upside down. Boom. What do we have? We have a wee, we have a wee knife, not a little knife, a wee knife. Can you picture anything opposite of Strider than a Chinese produced, Chinese owned wee knife? In fact, uh, this may be my first wee knife ever now that I think about it. Um, I've owned a number of Chinese owned, Chinese produced knives of various types. 
Um, I think this might be my first Wii knife. This was a total impulse purchase. I saw it pop up on a YouTube short, I believe, and I just thought it looked cool and classy and slick. And I was like, I'm in, and I bought it from White Mountain Knives. Uh, I guess it's a limited edition. This is number 46 of 300, uh, which is pretty cool, I guess. Kind of cool. Got a got a cool little sticker here. This looks like a um, Elijah Isham style knife here. Interesting with that guy. I've I've followed you know uh, rest in peace. I've I followed him on Instagram when he was doing hand drawings of knife designs with pencil, never imagining that he would ever actually produce any of his designs. And then lo and behold, he did. Um, and he was pretty popular there for a while. Uh, really unfortunate what happened there. We've got a nice, nice case. And then we've got, we got the knife and here it is. Uh, this is not my usual style of knife. Um, it was out of my comfort zone in a couple of different ways. Um, and it is a little bit oily. This is the something, something. Uh, this is the Makani limited edition. Now, I don't know if the if the Makani um, model itself is by nature limited edition or if it was just this particular run of them. I don't really follow Wii knives too closely. I know they exist. You know, I, I see them all over the place. Never really looked at them too closely. Like I said, this popped up on a video I was watching and it just sparked my interest. And I was like, you know, I don't have anything like that. That looks pretty cool. Um, I thought the price point was fine. Um, later, after the fact, watching a few videos on this knife after I ordered it, I guess people say it's overpriced. It's all perspective, I guess. Um, maybe because I'm not in this world as much. I didn't realize that it was a little overpriced. Uh, this cost me just over $300. And from my perspective, you know, M390 steel with a cool, uh, I assume that's a pseudo hand satin finish. I, I don't think people are doing that by hand, although you never know, maybe they are. Uh, frame lock with all the goodies, bearings, all those things. But then it's got this really cool titanium inlay that has this really cool anodization pattern on it. Same thing with the backspacer there. Just a real classy bitch. You know what I mean? Pocket clip is looking slick. That is a super nice pocket clip. Other people have talked about that at length. I wholeheartedly agree. That's a cool looking pocket clip. Talk about something that doesn't look like an add-on, right? This looks like somebody designed that as part of the knife as opposed to saying, oh, we got to put a pocket clip on there. What do we do? You know, uh, sculpted, obviously, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, but I, I don't know. I, $300 for this, I thought was not too bad, but we'll see what your opinion is. Really cool. This one has the dark anodization on the handle, stonewashed, got that Wii logo there. I do kind of wish that they uh, collared up the front here. It's kind of a shame it didn't get any of this uh, anodized titanium action, but still very cool. Uh, let's check lock up. Oh my gosh, doesn't budge. <laughs> Does not budge. Fires like a rocket. Some people have been able to use the uh, fuller to open it. Yeah, I guess it kind of works. I don't think I'll be able to do my thumb, my big fat nasty sausage thumb, but primarily it's a flipper. Just so cool. Um, so here's the thing too, is it's an interesting perspective, right? Because, you know, this is the stuff that I've been into for the most part, for the last little bit, this kind of thing. Um, and this is, you know, kind of my bread and butter. This is what, this is my home base, these sort of knives. Um, so when I get something like this, that is machined so precise, closes, smooth as butter, lockup is 100% rock solid, no slip, no wiggle, nothing perfectly centered a lot of this stuff people take for granted now but i remember back in the day back in the old times when that stuff was not guaranteed you know part of the fun of reviewing knives back then was when everything was all innovative and brand new that stuff had to be assessed you know you'd get some new frame lock knife and it's like does this thing even function does this lock function does it work you know um and a lot of that stuff in modern manufacturing is just so milquetoast now 
that it's hardly mentioned, right? It's just a, a little side point like, oh yeah, lock up solid. Of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? Really like that blade. This is just super elegant. Uh, like I said, not my normal style of knife. I usually like things a little edgier, little me, uh, what would I say? A little more aggression to it, right? Usually I'm into knives that have sharper angles, sharper features. Uh, this one is just very refined and smooth and like perfect. Um, but I kind of figured, you know, I could, I have place in my collection for something like this. Uh, first impressions right off the bat, aside from the stuff you would probably normally expect, uh, it's quite thin. It is quite thin in the hand, definitely thin. However, it does feel really good. So this thing is going to carry like a dream. Um, and this, you know, this pseudo kind of, uh, wow, that looks, that just looks really cool. Um, it, it's kind of poor man Damascus, right? Um, at first glance, you'd be like, oh, is that a, is that a Damascus clip right there? It's not, it's titanium. It just has that really cool anodization on there which kind of gives it that, that really unique pattern. You can get this uh, with a plain front or you can get it with uh, carbon fiber inlays, a couple different inlays, and then this titanium inlay here as well. So, all right guys, these could not be any different than each other, right? And yet, in my mind, I'm just as excited for both and I think they're both really, really cool. Well, maybe the Strider's a little bit cooler, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. All right, guys. Interesting unboxing day. Interesting unboxing day. Let me know down below. Do you get unboxings like this where they're polar opposite or uh, is your stuff more consistent than, than what I do? Um, I'm all over the place. All right, guys. See you later.